Mal, one co-host who wanted the hammer too much, another who will not take it. Is this our legacy? Because this season we're debating the winner of every episode of Binge Mode Marvel. Whosoever holds this hammer, if they be worthy, shall possess the power of Binge Today's debate, Thor, God of Thunder, Heard versus of Dr. Gene Foster. Now, before we begin, let's quickly refresh everybody on the ground rules. There is a coin flip. Yeah. Determines who go first. Then there is a 60-second case made by both parties, followed by a 30-second rebuttal. And then it goes to you for that hit of sweet, sweet democracy. Choose who wins. Mal, would you like to flip the coin? Sure. And, I'll and flip the time, coin. And this time, I'm glad you're flipping it so that you cannot accuse me of somehow fixing the coin flip as you so shamefully did previously. It wasn't an accusation, just more of an observation. That's all. <laughs> I'm going to flip this coin and we'll see if it remains in uh, our realm or if the boundaries between the worlds are so thin that it yes. ends up slipping through a portal into another dimension. Who can know? Flip. Hey, I'm going to say heads. Guess what? It's fucking heads again. What is going on? Graham, you need to look into this. You need to run some statistical analysis. This is not normal. What the but, fuck? But Cram, Cram would say it is normal because then we just do it a hundred more times and then we'll probably have a run of eight, eight tails. I know. He's, he's rolling his eyes at me. And Oh, here we go. Let's see. <laughs> a real-time Zach tier. A Zach Cram fact. If it's eight times in a row, that's one in 256. That's not crazy, right? That's pretty good. I don't know how odds. We also don't know if it's actually eight times in a row, or if I just can't remember I know. something in as small of a sample size as eight, which is also possible. But okay, all right. Uh, so you won the coin flip. Shocker. Do you want to go first or second? Um, I'll go second again. Interesting. Interesting. What? Okay, yeah, it's okay. It's just, it's interesting. What is interesting? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> that look gets me every time. <clears throat> Three. Two. One, go. What a movie for our gal, Jane Foster. For starters, we have binge mode like to award growth and development, and so I feel compelled to mm -hmm. toast Jane for not hitting Thor repeatedly with her vehicle in this movie. Here's to progress. And that road to progress is not an easy one for Jane, but it is one that she walks boldly nonetheless. She's in a long distance relationship with a god, always tough. She has to deal with the skeptical parents, never fun. And she comes into contact with the ether, which possesses her, Really less than ideal, but Jane proves equal to all of the challenges she gets on famously with Frigga, even manages to win over Odin, most impressively of all, of course, wins Loki's begrudging respect. She rocks some dope new outfits, gets to visit Asgard, Svartalheim, quite a run of cosmic tourism for our fellow Midgardian. She does all of those things because she dominates Thor's heart and mind, despite everyone and everything telling him not to let it be so. She has won him, just as she will win today's debate. And oh yeah, channeling the ether means she's channeling an infinity stone, the reality stone, and it's not killing her. I think I said my piece. I feel good. It's good. I love Jane. Yeah. And let me just say, state for the record now, that I hope that she becomes the god of thunder. And I think she will. She's going to. Phase yeah. four. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's, it's like be... she already has the hammer, so we might as well give it to her here. I think the my only thing is like, what do they, because in the comics, Jane grows to like six foot five and like shoulders. Well, and like... as we discussed in our Thor pod, I mean, based on the framing of their their first kiss, she's already <laughs> six five. Just so, so, true. <laughs> so true. nothing to worry about. <clears throat> okay. Okay. I'll count you in. No, you count yourself in. Yeah. Three. Wait. Sorry, I have to sneeze. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, 
sorry. Okay, no sneeze coming. It, it wasn't. It wasn't gamesmanship, though. I really did have to sneeze. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Three, two, mm-hmm. one. What an incredible performance by the God of Thunder, Thor. Not only does he reconnect with his love, Jane Foster, and they have a wonderful time together. Uh, they they really bond on an emotional level. She learns about his world. He defeats Malekith the Accursed, takes the full force of the Reality Stone, showing you the strength that he has, fights off Malekith during the Convergence. And not only that, Thor, not always considered uh, an intellectual character, he designs a <laughs> great heist with his friends and with the help of Loki to break out of Asgard and uh, go against the will of Odin in order to save not just Midgard, not just Asgard, not just Vanaheim, not just Nivedalir, all the realms, all the realms. What an incredible performance by Thor, the god of thunder. I don't need any more than this. Once again, did not need the entire clock. Concerning, troubling. Much like Thor rushing into the contest without a complete game plan. (laughs) Clock management, big part of this. Okay, 30 seconds to rebut. I'm ready, actually. Let's do this. Three, two, one, go. Friends, is Thor, due to his decision regarding handing off the ether at the conclusion of this film, ultimately responsible for the reality stone ending up in Thanos' possession, helping to fuel the snap. You decide. Did Thor once again get duped by Loki? Despite saying he would not do exactly that, you decide. Did that eventuality lead to him not knowing at the end that his own father was in real peril? You decide. Did he ask Heimdall to spy on Jane? You decide. I said my piece. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. Was it Eric or Jane's equipment and research that solved the the problem of the convergence? You decide. Is it (laughs) anyone else in this story but Jane Foster, who is employing an intern, who is furthermore employing another unexplained, illegal, and unpaid intern? You decide. Is it Jane Foster sitting pining on Earth Eating soup, wondering where Thor is. And that's you time. Decide. And that's time on that cruel and unfeeling note. <laughs> that is time. <laughs> and I will just remark that those Selvig pixie sticks enabled Thor to win, and he couldn't have won that battle without them. So you're Thanks pointing against help, your own Jane. argument. You're pointing against your own argument. First of all, okay. I, I, I disagree. I firmly disagree. <laughs> Dr. Jane Foster, what have you done except be possessed oh by God. the fucking Aether? And proved equal to it. I'd say that's extremely Obadiah Stane voice. Impressive. Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. Technology. <laughs> oh, God. All right, binge heads. We have made our cases and now Mjolnir is in your hands. Head to at binge underscore mode on Twitter and Instagram. Head to the binge mode group on Facebook. Cast your vote for whether Thor or Jane Foster I do love, is I, I the love worthy winner of Thor, the dark world. And if you're with us here on video today, and you're interested in listening to this entire episode of Binge Mode Marvel and hopefully the rest of the Binge Mode Marvel run, check us out on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.